What is damage and how do we apply it with our GURPS game aid? Well, normally you only apply damage when you're in combat. So there's going to be a little bit of a foundry tutorial here. Here I have some characters and some goblins, and they're all going to get into combat. So in foundry, you select all the tokens that are in combat. You right mouse click on any one of them and you click on this shield. Right, nothing happens. But if you look up here in the combat tracker, you now see all of the people in combat. Um, I actually like to right mouse click on this to open up a secondary window so that I can go back to the chat log. So here we go, here's our list of people in combat. Now Foundry expects us to roll initiative, but GURPS really doesn't have initiative, it has turn order. We've already programmed that in. And you can determine that by pressing this button right here, roll all. Now it's actually rolling dice because the last determining factor in the GURPS formula is if everything ties, then you roll a six-sided dice to determine who's faster. And you can see that with the goblins down here. They all have the same stats, but one rolled a six, one rolled a five, and one rolled a four. Now this order isn't set in stone. As the GM, you can change it. For example, maybe Lady Serial has tactics, and the GM has said that because of her tactics, she can actually attack earlier in the round. So to do that, you would right mouse click, select Update Combatant, and then change the value. And now Lady Serial's to the top. In Foundry, you can configure what value is reported here. I'm having it report the HP. So you bring open the combat tracker settings and pick HP value. And you may notice these two additional heart icons, which is a little different than standard foundry. These are indicators of reeling and tired. You don't have to play with those rules, but if you do, you can turn them on or off here from the combat tracker. So we started combat and I'm just gonna skip over to Bog's turn. So this is the user playing Bog. So he's going to move in for the kill and roll an attack. I'll open up his character sheet and we will swing the great axe. And it looks like we're gonna hit. So let's see if this uh, goblin can dodge. So we'll try the dodge and he fails. So now Bog has to do some damage, but what is damage? When you're sitting around a table, damage is just some number the GM tells you and you scratch it off your character sheet, which you can do in the game aid. Your character has this little counter right here for hit points and fatigue points, and you can use the buttons to move it up and down. You can click in it and type in any number that you want. You can use the little quick buttons here to move up and down. You can use this button to reset it. If you hold down the shift key, you'll go up and down five points each. Basically, you can record your hit points and your fatigue points manually any way you want. So how do you know how many points to remove? Well, the GM will usually tell you, and they might do it through a foundry macro. This is the foundry syntax for rolling 3d6, or 3d6 minus 3. And you can click on these chat messages to see what the actual dice were that were rolled. The GURPS game aid offers another format for rolling dice. So this chat command right here we'll roll three dice. Of course, in GURPS, all dice are six-sided. And three dice minus three. Because rolling 3d6 is pretty common in GURPS, there's actually a quick button down here. If you click these red dice, you'll get uh, 3d6. And if you right mouse click it, you'll just get 1d6, just in case that ever comes up. The one major difference between the chat formulas is that our game aid format allows you to describe the damage type. And GURPS has this well-known list of damage types. And by telling it that it is this kind of damage, you'll get a slightly different chat message. Our system recognizes that this is a damage roll versus just some random roll because it provides this draggable section here. And that comes in handy a little bit later. For the most part, you won't have to worry about the damage types. If you've created your characters in GCA or GCS, then they will automatically fill in the type of damage that they have. And the user can just click on this and roll this as damage. So Bog's gonna roll as damage, but we play with the extra effort rules and he likes to do the mighty blow when possible. You can get the modifier down here in the modifier bucket right there, plus two damage, mighty blow. 
but he uses it so often that I just decided to add it as an on-the-fly formula to the weapon itself, so I don't even have to go down there. And to do that, I just double-clicked on the weapon and added the on-the-fly formula for the Mighty Blow. So Bog is going to do his damage. He's going to add the Mighty Blow, and you can see the modifier in the modifier bucket, and then he's going to roll damage. And you can see the results in the chat log. The GM can apply this damage just by opening up the character sheet and subtracting 12 points from the hit points, or they can take this draggable element and drag it onto the character sheet that's going to be receiving the damage, and this will bring up the damage calculator. The GM can also drag the damage onto the combat tracker element or just the token itself. Any way works, and it brings up the damage calculator. And there is a fifth way that the GM can apply damage to a target, but it requires some help from the player. So here I am controlling Bog, and I'm going to do some combat, but the character sheet keeps getting in the way. I'm going to take my most used roles and actions and put them on the macro bar. So I'm going to drag the attack to here. I'm going to drag this modifier to there, and I'm going to drag the damage to there. And now I can close my character sheet. And I'm attacking this goblin right here, so I want to use Foundry's tool for targeting it. So to target this in Foundry, you double right-click. There, it's targeted. And I'm going to roll my damage. Again, I add the Mighty Blow, and then roll damage. From the player's side, it looks about the same, although you can see it shows targeting Goblin 4. And on the GM side, it has the same kind of damage, but there is now this button, Apply All to Goblin 4. So this makes it easier for the GM. The GM doesn't have to figure out how to drag it over or which token to drag it on. They can just click this button. So here is the damage calculator. Yeah, it's kind of big and forbidding, but we can take it in steps, and you only have to use what you want. So to start off, we'll look at the top. We're doing 12 points of damage. Well, as the GM, you can just edit that. You can just say, you know what, that was really only 10. It's up to you. We're applying it to hit points, or you can select fatigue points, or control points if you use Douglas Cole's Fantastic Dungeon Grappling. The link's in the description. And if you define your own resource trackers and set them as a damage type, they'll appear in this list. So you want to keep it simple. You would just click on the Apply button, and that would apply 10 points of damage to this goblin. Of course, Apply means that it will show publicly in the chat log. And you may not want that to happen. You may not want your players to know exactly how much damage made it through and how bad they're feeling. So instead, you can apply quietly. And that will still report the information, but it's just a whisper to the owners of this target. Which, of course, is just the GM, since it's an NPC. So we'll apply quietly. And you can see in the chat log that uh, Bog injures the goblin for 10 hit points. You can also see that the goblin is reeling because I have the automatic reeling and tired setting turned on. So this goblin is below one half, I'm sorry, one third hit points and its move and dodge are halved. Poor goblin. Okay, that was the simple damage. Well, let's uh, show you what it looks like if you apply more of the GURPS rules. First, let's go back to this goblin and reset their hit points. You'll notice that they are no longer reeling. And then we will drag the damage and do some damage. So we'll start from the left. By default, all attacks hit the torso. If the user has selected a hit location and they succeed, then you will have to pick that hit location. You notice with this NPC, they only have DR and the torso. That's because the MOOC generator only creates DR at the torso location. If you need to have DR anywhere else or everywhere else, you can just go down here to the override DR and say, okay, this has got two in all of the locations. The next thing we try to do is figure out what kind of damage, what type of damage is coming in. And we read the text that came with the attack, in this case, cut. Now, as the GM, you can override this. If for some reason the damage was incorrect or you want to just change it to something else, feel free to do that. You can also just override the modifier and make it anything you want. And we'll leave the stuff on the right here alone for a minute. And if you look at the bottom, you see the calculation. And this is the stuff that a lot of GURPS players kind of, um, well, let's say abhor. 
the math can get nasty sometimes. We have broken it out to show you exactly how it's calculated and then what the final result will be, which is over here on the right. And like above, you can apply the injury or apply it quietly. The keep open options are in case you're doing multiple damages to the same character. It's more for weapons with high rates of fire. Now in the middle of the calculation and results page, we show some notifications. And what we're telling you is that if the goblin takes this much damage, they would suffer shock. Now you may not want to display this information to the player characters, but if you want, you can click on these chat icons and it will chat out a message describing what these statuses are. So if this was an attack against a player character, you could press this button and it will write this message out. And it's just a reminder for them to take the minus four if they're doing any dex or IQ checks next round. And here is an area where we will not automate this. This is really up to you to play the game your way. You're not required to use these, and these are just reminders. Here's an example. If the goblin took this damage, it would be considered a major wound. And you can send this chat message out, which has a role to check your health to see if you avoid stun. You get various modifiers if you have either of these two attributes. But again, we don't check your character. This is up to you to decide how to use it. One of the last things I want to show you is the hit location modifiers. By default, this is turned on, but there's a system setting if you want to have this by default turned off. And what this does is if you attack a different hit location, sometimes the modifiers change. Like right now, cutting is one and a half times damage after DR. But if you attack the eye, you'll notice that the modifier is times four. And that's because of the hit location. If you don't want that to occur, you turn this off and it goes back to the, the default wounding modifiers. Now all of the rest of these options, these are all special situations and we have the links to explain the rules and then we do the math for you. Now you can just close this dialogue and no damage will be applied. You can drag it and drop it again and no damage will be applied until you do one of the applies. If we just go with the default rules, it hits the torso, it's cutting, uh, eight points penetrate, then it's multiplied by one and a half, that's 12 points of injury, that's shock and a major wound. Well, we'll apply it. And you can see over here that because we did the full math damage and not the simple damage, you can actually see the damage calculations in the chat window. By default, this is closed, but there's a system setting that will make this by default open. And our goblin is reeling yet again. As a GM, I have to remember that this was a major wound. So if we play with those rules, he needs to make a health check to see if he's stunned. If you don't want the players to see the results of this roll, you can hold down the shift key when you're clicking on any of these buttons and it will be a private message to just you. The characters just see Game Master privately rolled some dice. And if you don't like your players knowing when the GM makes a private roll at all, then there's this great module, Hide GM Rolls, that will hide the chat messages for the players for any private GM roll. So that's the end of Bog's turn. You can see in the combat tracker that Goblin 4 has the less than one third hit point Flag turned on, he's reeling. His current hit points are minus two, and he's in bad shape. So that's it. That is the process. Rinse and repeat. Roll for attack, roll for defense, roll for damage, and then drag and drop or do whatever, and use the damage calculator at whatever level you want to apply your damage. Good luck, and thank you for watching.